Steve, thank you. City Council member Wendell Young is recovering right now after a life saving heart surgery. Young suffered from acute aortic dissection. It's the same heart condition that claimed the life of actor John Ritter. He was rushed into emergency surgery last Thursday at Good Sam Hospital. Young's family says they were caught off guard by the diagnosis, but Wendell is doing well, talking and even cracking jokes. He's doing wonderful. He's recovering. He's actually ahead of recovery. So we just thank everybody. All we would like is to just to ask for your prayers. Well, that's good news. Young's family says he still plans to run for re-election in November. Doctors hope to discharge him by early next week, Tanya. All right, Ryan, we want to get back to our lineup now. We are going to be talking about those temporary jobs for the holidays. Target is hiring a lot of people, but you might be surprised about some of the jobs that they need filled. You are watching the Now Cincinnati. Well, let's catch up on the Now News feed. The Justice Department is now preventing a Senate committee from interviewing two top FBI leaders about the firing of former FBI Director James Comey. It's the latest sign Comey's firing could be part of the special counsel's investigation. Facebook is changing its rules for who can make money from ads on the site. There have been concerns that it's just too easy for people who create fake news to cash in. So now everything from misinformation to clickbait will get publishers cut off. And we're getting our first look at Serena Williams' baby. She posted this picture of Alexis Olympia Ohanian Jr. on Instagram today. She says, technically her baby has already won a Grand Slam title because she was inside her mom when she won hers. Today, the president is continuing his push to work across party lines to get key issues addressed. The biggest one right now is tax reform. He held a bipartisan meeting this afternoon at the White House. They also plan to discuss infrastructure and health care. Representatives from both parties on the House Problem Solvers Caucus are among those who attended. They say they hope this begins a new era in bipartisanship to start getting things accomplished. You know, we haven't even reached the official end of summer, but the holiday season is already here. Target is the first to announce its seasonal hiring plans. And then now's Annie Taylor takes a look at the openings and who may be next to put out the help wanted sign. Target is the store to beat this holiday season. They're hiring 100,000 people to fill holiday seasonal positions. That's up 40% than last year. Target is the first big company to announce its hiring plans for the busiest shopping season of the year. Target says many of its seasonal jobs include things you might expect, like stocking shelves and ringing up customers. But this year, it's also adding 4,500 jobs at its distribution centers in anticipation of more online orders. If Target's hiring plans are any indication of this year's job opportunities, we'll get ready for other big name companies to follow suit. Last year, Amazon hired an extra 120,000 workers for the season, and UPS brought on 95,000 more employees to help out. Target seasonal hiring begins this fall. You'll want to make sure you check with your local Target to find out when your hiring event is, but a lot of seasonal positions turn into full-time positions after the holidays. For the now, I'm Annie Taylor. And speaking of hiring, Cincinnati is a great place to find a job if you need one. Glassdoor ranked the top 25 cities to find a job in 2017 based on opportunity, job satisfaction, and cost of living. Cincinnati came in at number eight, and this whole region is pretty good as well. Columbus at number seven, Cleveland at number nine, and Louisville at number 10, and Tanya, Pittsburgh is number one. All right. A new partnership between 4C for Children and Bethany House is helping struggling tri-state families find child care for their kids. 4C is a local nonprofit. It's been helping families find quality child care for more than 30 years. It recently launched a special program to help families experiencing homelessness or housing insecurity. Employees work to find safe child care options that meet the parents' needs when it comes to hours and flexibility. In its first year, 4C has helped a total of 100 families and is continuing to help more each and every month. 4C has done a tremendous job in just locating um, safe daycare facilities for our residents. 
Read more about 4C and its services right now on WCPO.com. Dozens of people gathered at the Hamilton County Commissioner's meeting today protesting the possible closing of one building of the main library downtown. Library trustees recently voted to close the north building on Vine Street, which would consolidate all services to the south building. Now, several people spoke out against the closure, saying the public had no say in this vote. They're, they're trying to say that, uh, you know, it's not used enough, but when that building was built, uh, they said that the south building was bursting at the seams. So that means that basically we need the space. The future of the north building is unclear. Meanwhile, the library has said that even though the building is closing, no services would be cut. I'm here now with Chief Mineralogist Steve Raleigh. And Steve, I'm looking at your camera here, and it looks like you have a little bit of rain. Yeah, there's some rain out there, and it's going to continue too, Ryan, uh. in fact. So let's uh, give everybody the heads up that it's an umbrella night for the uh, tri-state. Here's our nine first warning radar network, and you'll see all the radars up, active, picking up rain all over the place. We're going to continue to see some light, and in some cases, moderate to maybe a downpour in some spots, as we were showing you at the beginning of, uh, of the show. What's happening is the remnants of Irma, this low, just driving toward us and look at just lifting that moisture over the top of us. So that's going to continue tonight and for the first part of tomorrow. And then we're going to start drying out and Friday and going into the weekend looks pretty doggone nice. Here's future view for you as we push it ahead. It shows the green on the screen right through tonight and then we start breaking into tomorrow morning where it starts drying up a little bit as the low itself starts moving off to the east. And as a result, we only get really some isolated and scattered showers through the day tomorrow. More clouds for your Thursday than anything else. Quite frankly, if you get hit with a shower, I think you'd be the exception as opposed to the rule. And then that low is really going to pull off and we're going to start to see some significant clearing going into Friday. And that means sunshine for Friday, Saturday and Sunday with another chance for rain going into uh, next week. OK, so let's give you the particulars right for tonight. We're looking at temperatures dropping into the upper 50s, 59 in Cincinnati. And then for tomorrow, we're getting into the about 70 degree mark in most spots. It'll depend if you do get hit with a shower. If you do, you may you might stay in the uh, upper 60s in the afternoon. Right at the moment, you'll see how cool it is because the rain's been coming down in so many spots. It's dropped to 61 in Cincinnati. I'm looking at 59 overnight and then for tomorrow, 70 degrees, mostly cloudy, few scattered showers, as I mentioned. And for tomorrow night uh, coming, excuse me, into Thursday night now, as we look at things, we're talking about a scattered shower as a possibility for your uh, Bengals forecast for tailgate, but then the game should be dry. So uh, as we head into Friday after tomorrow's game, we've got dry weather, but watch out for some fog and then seasonally warm temperatures. I mean, it's a big switcheroo coming Saturday and Sunday, guys. All right, Steve, so we talk a lot about our country's opioid epidemic, but there is something that you can do right now that will help. It will also, by the way, protect your family. That is next on The Now. It's time for the now news feed. This is a long shot, but Senator Bernie Sanders is pushing Medicare for everyone. Under his new bill introduced today, you'd get coverage by showing a government issued card and you wouldn't have to pay a deductible. But don't count on this passing with Republicans controlling Congress. South Korea taking action after North Korea's recent nuclear weapons test. You are looking at South Korea's first live fire drill for an advanced air launched cruise missile. It did that today. And even Anon, take a look at this, is helping others clean up after Hurricane Irma. Check her out. She's even using a chainsaw to cut up trees the storm brought down. Miami police posted about her on Facebook, and someone in the comments said she rocks. We could not agree more. Hurricane Harvey and Irma are a real good reminder about being prepared in an emergency. So we talked to some local experts about the one thing you can do to save someone's life. This video is part of an instructional series from FEMA and other agencies. The message here, you are the help until help arrives. It's a program that teaches five things you can do in emergency. First, call 911. Then protect the person from more harm. Then position them so they can breathe. And next, provide comfort and finally, Stop the bleeding, which could save someone's life. Your first aid kit and your preparedness kit, ready to give bandages, gauze, maybe perhaps a tourniquet. Now, meanwhile, if there is an emergency situation and you want to help, FEMA offers 
online training. We have a link on our website. It's WCPO.com. Have you checked your medicine cabinet lately? It turns out there's something you can do right now to help fight the opioid crisis. A recent study found 9 out of 10 people don't use all of their prescription painkillers. Only 1 out of 10 of people get rid of what's left, which is on average more than 10 pills in a bottle. Experts say leftover meds is how many people get access to opioids in the first place. So now is a good time to take inventory and double check with your pharmacy on the best way to get rid of them. Or you can lock them up until a drug take back event. We just hosted one over the weekend as part of our not on your side shred day. Cradle Cincinnati is honoring the people fighting to keep tri-state babies and their moms healthy. Today, Cradle Cincinnati announced the Champions for Change Award winners. Founder Todd Portune says over the last three years, the infant mortality rate in Cincinnati has decreased by 20%. He says these are people who have contributed to that success and continue to make a difference in the community. They've shown a willingness to partner uh, with Cradle to achieve much, much better results, and we're very happy to recognize them. Nine people were honored okay. today for their efforts. We still have a lot to talk about, including the latest headlines from Irma. We're taking a look at what the storm could do to our grocery prices, and it's not just because of all of the damaged crops either. Rain is coming down across the tri-state, taking a live look at I-71 at Red Bank Road. Boy, traffic uh, is pretty slow out there, oh folks. Yeah. Be careful if you're heading out. You know you need to take a little extra time and expect people to be a little late getting home. Steve is along in just a few minutes with your forecast. You are watching the Now Cincinnati. Oh, my God, the roof. You can hear the pain in that woman's voice. She was returning to her home in Florida to, to find most of it gone after Hurricane Irma. Welcome back, everyone, to the Now Cincinnati. Last night, it was a who's who of celebrities all taking part in the hand-in-hand -hand benefit to help people impacted by Hurricanes Harvey and Irma. You may have watched it right here on None of Your Side. We are glad to say that it raised more than $44 wow. million. Dollars. The Now's Kamasi Aaron shows us where the rebuilding process stands and why it may take much more to help people fully recover. Nearly three weeks after Harvey, and this is still what you see in many Houston neighborhoods. It was totally damaged. There's, there's no way I could keep those. At the Tai Tai home, recovery is a slow process, with some bright spots making it a little easier. Fortunately, our stove is currently working, like it can still cook. Tasha's home is gutted out. Still, she and her husband and four children are living in it. I know it's not a safe place to be, but... I don't know where else I can go. More than 20,000 people are still in shelters or FEMA hotels in Texas. And even though floodwaters are gone, mold and mosquitoes are still here, along with the threat of sickness and disease. In hard hit Port Arthur and Beaumont, people are still struggling to find the basics like food and water. But right now, all eyes are focused on Florida, where people are just beginning to pick up the pieces left in Irma's wake. They're clearing debris from roads and checking for damage so that those who evacuated can return to their homes. But millions are still without power, and boil water advisories are in place in many areas. In the U.S. Virgin Islands, people are still being evacuated to Puerto Rico. Being in a state where I'm not sure what's going to happen next, not sure where I'm going to get a next meal. That is something that is very discomforting for me. So I'm happy to have been able to leave the island. All said, this is going to be a long recovery. The latest estimates show together Hurricanes Harvey and Irma have caused between $150 billion and $200 billion in damage. And one estimate puts that figure closer to $300 billion. For the now, I'm Kamasi Aaron. Hurricane Irma may have an impact far beyond Florida and the other states it hit. Start watching prices at the grocery store, folks, because they could be going up. The storm caused so much damage to farms in Florida. It flooded fields and orange groves in places like Naples. And it's not just potential crop damage that's the problem. The storm broke irrigation pipes and other infrastructure. All that means we will get fewer fruit and vegetables from Florida when what's left is harvested in another month or so. So prices on everything from tomatoes to orange juice could be impacted. Now the Gulf Citrus Growers Association estimates Hurricane Irma blew the fruit off of about half of the region's citrus trees and that it predicts that is 
that at least half of the season's crop is now wiped out. One expert says prices could go up through the holidays this year, but because it takes a while to grow new citrus trees, there could be a long term impact as well as damage is assessed. Well, Fort Thomas Independent School District are collecting school supplies for victims of Hurricane Harvey. They're using it as a teachable moment. Teacher Megan Bowman Hennies got the idea from Twitter. She saw a tweet from Houston schools talking about what they needed. After that, she talked to the principal and then the whole school district got involved. They're collecting backpacks, paper, pencils and everything else kids would need. She says this lesson of giving will stick with students forever. And I thought it was a really good way for our students to build empathy and feel a more personal connection to understand since we had just started school that um, that it would have been so tough to not have the necessities or those little things that they get excited about. The school supply drive is over on Friday. You can drop off donations at any of the schools in the Fort Thomas School District or at the central office. So really we've been getting a nice healthy rain I would call this over the last day or two but yeah. how much more going forward uh, really not much okay. uh, we'll get some tonight it'll be very rainy tonight it's an umbrella night tomorrow it's going to be really scattered for us and this is the odd part and almost uh, makes you feel guilty as it as you say it's almost been a good rain for us it has very been. slow yeah. just you know good for everything Soaks else in. yeah let's uh, show you what's up here in our nine first warning Doppler uh, you'll notice that we've got just some moderate rain in spots uh, that darker green indicates come down pretty good when we see the yellow then it's coming down on the heavy side we've got some showers scattered all over the place let's kind of highlight where we stand Hillsboro down to West Union Peebles over by Georgetown into Maysville there's a good band here this is all lifting off to the east northeast then we have this line that's set up here you'll see it stretching all the way up by Hamilton down to Milford just about at our radar site and then looks like right by Felicity uh, some heavy rain just uh, moving through the area and and then we've got some light to moderate rain showing up in Liberty and Connorsville down to Brookville. There's a swath of some good light to moderate rain that's moving eastward. So you folks in uh, Ohio and Switzerland County, also Dearborn, this is coming toward you. You'll see it right now uh, stretching uh, across Ripley County. As we look at the story uh, across the area for us tonight, I mentioned the umbrella tonight. Then we're talking about some game time weather for the Bengals coming up tomorrow. Then I've got your Oktoberfest out look and we'll come back with a big weekend switcheroo is what I'm calling it guys. All right, Steve. Thank you. Checking back in on the lineup. Think you've bombed a job interview before. Well, you'll meet a guy who got arrested during his job interview. That's next on the now. Let's catch you up on the now news feed. President Donald Trump says he remains committed to positive race relations after meeting today with the only African American Republican current, currently serving, that is, in the Senate. The White House also says the president will absolutely sign a resolution condemning white supremacists and other hate groups. Well, today Target is recalling 175,000 of these dressers because they could tip over. So far, it's happened at least 12 times even falling on two three-year-olds. Thankfully, no one was hurt. The dressers were sold at Target from 2013 through April of last year. And Olympic leaders made it official today. L.A. gets the games in 2028. The city's been talking about this since July, but the International Olympic Committee had to approve everything. Let's take a closer look at the push from Congress to get the president to take a stand against white supremacists. Emily Rao reports this is after both chambers of Congress unanimously approved a resolution condemning the violence in Charlottesville, white nationalists, and the KKK. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. That message in the wake of hate groups marching through Charlottesville before violence erupted, resulting in the death of 32-year-old Heather Heyer, sparked outrage from all sides. President Trump asked again and again to clarify his comments. It's going to be very difficult for this president to lead if, in fact, that moral authority remains compromised. Senator Tim Scott, the only black Republican in the U.S. Senate, sharply criticizing the president on Face the Nation, calling on him to sit down with people who have experienced racism. And today, Scott visiting the White House to meet with the president, later telling ABC News they didn't talk about the congressional resolution that condemns hate groups. 
and the White House saying in that meeting, Scott didn't criticize the president for his response to Charlottesville. Well, they talked about it uh, pretty in depth, but uh, the focus was primarily on solutions moving forward. Sarah Sanders going on to say President Trump will absolutely sign the resolution. He looks forward to doing so as soon as he receives it, which he hasn't done. That was Emily Rao reporting that bipartisan resolution describes the violence in Charlottesville as a domestic terrorist attack. And Tanya, racism right here in the tri-state is what helped George Clooney come up with his new movie. You know what? It sure did. It was one of his childhood memories with his dad, Nick. You know, Nick Clooney, the legendary anchor in Cincinnati. That film is called Suburbicon. Now, in it, a black family moves to a predominantly white community in the 1950s. Now, Clooney says he remembers when his father, as I mentioned, former news anchor Nick Clooney, covered a gathering of just six white supremacists on Fountain Square. Clooney says his dad took that camera up to Carew Tower and showed the supremacists with about a thousand people yelling around them. He says his dad wanted to show that those few white supremacists did not represent Cincinnati. Suburbicon, a dark comedy, hits theaters next month. So this may be the most bizarre getaway attempt ever. Police say the suspect ditched his car after a chase in Westwood, Massachusetts. So watch what happens next. He calmly walks into an electronics business to ask if they're hiring. You can see on surveillance camera <laughs> that he's then taken into an office to fill out an application and to do a job interview. Very calm. At the same time, police came across his car and started searching it before they came into the building. So I said, boy, there goes a police dog by the window. He goes, let me see. They grab him and he starts to tussle with him. And the other two come in, guns in hand, and they said to him, you didn't think that we weren't going to find you, did you? Very interesting job interview, <laughs> to say the least. And my guess is he didn't get that job. The suspect, 26-year-old Jose Jimenez, was wanted for running over a trooper's foot during a traffic stop. Taking another look at the lineup this afternoon, is the new iPhone out of your budget? Well, we found some great alternatives that won't cost you $1,000. This is the Now Cincinnati. You're watching the Now Cincinnati on Nine on Your Side. Welcome back. Another live look at traffic as rain continues to fall across the tri-state. This is at I-75 at Sharon Road getting backed up right now. If you're headed out, be sure to give yourself plenty of time. Steve is back in just a few minutes with your weather. Now, everyone may be talking about the new iPhone 10 right now, but the price still has a lot of us in sticker shock including our dear friend, the cheapskate, John Matarese. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tanya. You know, we are looking at some other options because, yes, that new iPhone, as we reported yesterday, is expensive. But already today, Apple has cut the price on its iPhone 6 and 7 by $100. And the price for the iPhone SE, that's now $50 less. That means you'd pay between $350 and $699 if you buy directly from Apple. You know, you'll find even cheaper prices if you buy somewhere else. For example, Best Buy, look at that, the iPhone SE, $140. Walmart, just $129. Now, USA Today did some number crunching. It says the Samsung Galaxy S8 has many of the same features as the new iPhone 10, but only costs $725 instead of $1,000. And right now, there are promotions that could get you up to $300 off if you trade in an old iPhone. You know, that could bring the cost of the new one down to as low as $425. USA Today also found the OnePlus 5 is a reliable option starting at about $479. And you know, one other thing to watch for in the coming weeks, Google, remember them, will be updating its Pixel line of phones and so will Essential products if you want to discount phones. So by the time the new iPhone 10 actually hits store shelves in early November, you're going to have plenty of options so you don't waste your money. Tanya? It's good to know, John. Well, a new Cincinnati made app is changing the way for not that 911 operators, I should say, send you help. See it before anyone else does on Good Morning Tri-State at 6 a.m. tomorrow. This new tool is helping first responders find you during an emergency. Well, it's not your typical talk show. Next week is the premiere of Pickler and Ben, which will air weekdays at 3 p.m. right here on Nine of Your Side. What can people here in Cincinnati expect to see from the show? It's fun. Yeah. We keep it positive. It's a bright light on television. We want people to have a good time and just, I don't know, make them laugh. 